Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Maison African Motives. Uh, still working on Meccano techniques and for uh, that is uh, on metal cutting machines. We've got the question paper which was uh, written in uh, June 2022. Uh, so we're not going to waste much time. Let us quickly take the information that you're given. Uh, on question number seven, we've given a lathe with a drive efficiency of 85% is used to machine a workpiece of uh, 500 millimeters diameter at a spindle speed of 30 revs per minute. The cutting depth of the tool is 3.5 millimeters and the feed of the tool 0.5 millimeters per revolution of the workpiece. The cutting force on the cutting tool is 1,000 uh, newton per square millimeter in this case all right so uh let's see what we got in this case let us see how are we supposed to answer this typical question calculate the following the output power of the cutting tool and also the input power for the motor okay uh that is our first part of our question okay so if you have to ch check here yeah, according to the information uh that we are given we have got uh the efficiency first of 85 percent so here we've got our efficiency of 85%, which we can uh, just write as a decimal. If you want, you can just divide uh, by 100. This will be 0 0.85, all right? Uh, then we've got uh, is used to machine a workpiece of 500 millimeters in diameter. So there we are given the diameter of uh, 500 uh millimeters which you can convert to meters by dividing by 1000 this will be 0 0.5 meters at the spindle speed of so there we are given the speed of uh, 30 revs uh per minute that is uh in this case we are given a speed at the spindle okay then the cutting depth of the two is so that is a uh, the cutting depth we are given in this case, what can what what can we say? This is uh like uh just like height, okay, or the length. But let's uh, specifically mention this as the height depth, like uh from uh like this from this top to the to the down part. That is the depth. So it's a height that you're given. So we are having a height, or we can take this as the length. Okay, no matter uh, way that you understand it. Okay, so here we have got uh, the cutting depth, which is at uh, 3.5 millimeters. Uh, and also the feed of the tool is at 0 0.5. Okay, so we have got the feed, which is at 0 0.5. That is millimeter per revolution of the work piece. Okay, so it's per. Uh, so this is millimeter per revolution, uh, which means per each rev that we have for each revolution. So I'm just taking my time to take this information so that you understand uh, how to take this information, guys. The cutting pressure on the two is 1,000 newton per, take note, guys, per square millimeter. This is milli square millimeter or millimeter squared means you are talking about area there. Square units are for area. So it's per area. So we are given the pressure per area in this case. So our pressure per area is given as uh, 1,000 uh, Newton per area, which is per square millimeter. That is what it means. So the area is taken from these two. Or whenever you are taking the feed, uh, your area is going to be uh, the feed times uh, the ethic depth, which is uh, the depth in this case of uh, 0, uh, 3.5. So that is where we can have our area in this case. So we are going to have our depth times the feed. All right. So this gives us the area in square millimeters. So we are going to have our depth in millimeters since our area is supposed to be in square millimeters. So that's 3.5 times 0 0.5 take note about this so you've got your area which is uh going to be in this case 1 comma uh 75 square millimeters all right so that is what they are saying here so this is our area all right anyways uh this is not about the question i'm just explaining what 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 actually this part means okay so if we are given 
an area of 1,75 square millimeters. And we are told that our cutting pressure, which is this pressure here, it's 1,000 newton per each square millimeter per each, meaning to say one square millimeter corresponds with 1,000. That is what it means. One or 1,000 newton corresponds to one square millimeter. What about at this area that we got of 1,75 square millimeters? What is going to be the corresponding pressure there? So it's going to be 1,75 over 1 times 1,000. So meaning to say our actual pressure here is supposed to be 1,000 newton times the area that we are given of 1,75, which it, because we are told it's per area, per square millimeter. So this gives us 1,750 uh, newton. So this is the exact pressure that we are supposed to work with in our calculations, the cutting pressure, okay? So uh, that is how we can take our information. Let's answer our question. 7.11, we are given, calculate the following, the output power of the cutting tool. Five marks for that, okay? So how can we have the output power? Uh, from this, okay? So let's take, according to our information, we've got uh, the speed, the diameter, efficiency, and also we've got the pressure. And we are supposed to calculate output power from there. Remember that power can be taken from this formula. Uh, let's have it this way. Uh, so this is 7.11. Let's just hope it is going to be, it is going to be clear. All right, 7.11. So remember that power is simply from 2 pi nt over 60, or power can be taken from force times velocity. All right. Which part do we have? Do we have the force? We have got our force here that we are given. Uh, take note, uh, the force we calculated. Uh, okay, this is the pressure in, uh, this is, all right. All right, so the cutting press with the force that we are having, which is uh, at the cutting force here. So that is 1,750 Newton. So the force we are having here from uh, this cutting pressure on the two. Take note, this is Newton, meaning to say we are relating to, to the force. So we've got the force. But uh, on our formula, we do not have uh, V, which is uh, the velocity here. So from this formula. So where can you obtain V from? Remember that uh, V, the velocity, can be taken from this formula. Uh, we've got the diameter, so V can be taken from uh, pi dn. If your n is in revs per minute, uh, therefore we divide by 60 pi dn. So we divide by 60 if this is in revs per, sec uh, per minute. Revs per second, you do not divide by 60, you leave it like that. So this gives us velocity in... Uh, meters per second which we can calculate so our v is going to be pi times d our diameter in this case uh, remember on our information here we had the diameter of uh, 0 0.5 meters take note the speed at 30 revs per minute all right so that is what we have in this case all right so that is the diameter uh, in meters uh, 0 0.5, so that's 0 0.5 times the speed, revs per second, revs per minute, 30 divided by 60, or you can calculate N in revs per second first, or you can use this formula direct. So this gives us the velocity of uh, 0 0.785 in meters per second. With this velocity and uh, the pressure, the working pressure, which is our force in this case that we are given, can we can calculate the power in this case so let me just write in full so this power is actually the output power so we can write this as the output power or just p out like this okay so meaning to say our output power from the force times velocity concept our force in this case if we are to check we say it, it's a uh, 1750 so we are going to have 1750 times the velocity that we just calculated now. So our velocity here is going to be 0 0.785. So this gives us the output power, which is uh, 1,373 
0.75 watts. So you can convert this power to kilowatts if you want, or you can just leave your answer like this. Okay, so this is the first part of the question, uh, 7.11, which was to calculate uh, the power, the output power in this case. And uh, we are now given to calculate uh, on the 7.12, the input power of the motor, that is a uh, three marks, the input power. So where can we have the input? If we have got the output, we can work with the efficiency. Remember here, we are having efficiency of 85%. And we can relate this efficiency with power since we know that uh, efficiency simply is equivalent to the output over the input. So that is a uh, 7.12. We can take this from efficiency, that is power out, over power in times 100%. So depending with, uh, are you going to use the 100% or not? If you are not using uh, the 100%, therefore you use the decimal, that part that we had. Uh, remember our efficiency was 85%. So this as a decimal is 0 0.85, meaning to say, I'm not going to use 100. I've already divided by 100, so I'm not going to use this as 100. So you can substitute in our information, our efficiency of uh, 0 0.85, which is equal to the output power, which is uh, 1,373, uh, 3,75 over uh, the input power like this. All right, so with this formula, we can manipulate this to find P in. Uh, this is just like over one. So we can cross multiply these two so that we can make PI the subject. All right, uh, that is uh, 0 0.85 times P in is equal to one times this value, which is 1373,75. So to find the P in, we can divide by 0 0.85, both sides uh, 0 0.85. So this can cancel, we are remaining with the input power. So this is how we could have uh, calculated the input power. So our input power in this case is going to be 1616,176. Uh, uh, so this will be 176 in, in watts, or you can convert uh, to kilowatts by dividing by 1000. That's if you want to convert to kilowatts or you can just leave your answer like that. All right, so that was it uh, to obtain three marks on this uh, question one, uh, 7.12. If you check on the other part of the question, you've got 7.2, which is uh, uh, same information like uh, the other part that we had, but it was actually having a diagram. This time you are not given a diagram. They just gave us the RAM of a shaping a uh, machine is a mass of, so you're given the mass of the RAM, which is uh, 200 uh, kgs and it moves in the slides with a coefficient of friction. If you still remember, we had a question that had a diagram, uh, 0, 0,07, that is our coefficient of friction between the RAM and the slides. So the question now is asking us to calculate the horizontal force required to move the RAM, the horizontal force which is the frictional force that they are talking about in this case. So remember that uh, I said um, the frictional force can be, I mean, the coefficient of friction can be equal, can be equated to the frictional force over the normal reaction. We talked about this. Whereby the normal reaction simply represents mass times the gravitational acceleration uh, that is being opposed the, these two opposes each other. So you can use mass times the gravitational acceleration. So meaning we can calculate our frictional force by simply making this the subject. This is same as over one. So you can simply cross multiply to make our frictional force the subject one times the frictional force. That will be the frictional force is equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal reaction in this case, which is represented by mass times gravitational acceleration. So this can give us uh, the frictional force, remembering that G is equal to 9,81, uh, depending on the value that you'll be given. Uh, so our frictional force is going to be the coefficient of friction, which is uh, 0 0,07 times the mass of the RAM. The mass of the RAM in this case is uh, 200 kgs times the gravitational acceleration which we said is 9,81 meters per square second. So this can give us the frictional force. All right, so that is um, how we can obtain our frictional force in this case. So our frictional force uh, from the product of these, 
we are going to obtain 137,34 Newton. So this is what you're going to have at the end. And uh, now we are given on 7.2 to the coefficient of friction if the force to move the ram is increased by 30%. Take note, the force that was the one that we had before, the frictional force is now increased by 30%. So the formula is not going to change. Guys, this formula is not going to change that we, we are talking about here. Let me write aside so that we can understand 7.22. The, the coefficient of friction is supposed to be equal to the frictional force over the normal reaction, which the normal reaction does not change. What changed is that we increased the coefficient. We increased... Uh, the force to move the ram, which is the force to move the ram before the frictional force. We increased this by 30%. To increase, meaning to say you are adding a 30% on this part. So what you're going to do is that you are going to have your new frictional force now as the frictional force that we had before plus the increase of 30%. So an increase of 30%, uh, that is going to be 30% times the frictional force that we had before. So this is going to be uh, the total frictional force. The frictional force that we had before, then it's increased, increased, we are going to add the 30%. Adding 30% simply means 30 over 100, that is uh, 0, 0,3 times the frictional force. That is what I'm trying to say in this case. So that is what our question is uh, going to look like in this case. We are just increasing the frictional force. So meaning to say the frictional force that we had before of 137,34 is going to remain as it is, but we are going to add 30% of that friction, which is a 0, 0,3 as a decimal times the frictional force that we had before. So that's an increase of 30%, this one, which is 137,34. So that's how you are going to have your total frictional force, which is the increase. Everything over the normal reaction, which is not going to change, which is mass times the gravitational acceleration. So we've got the mass before times the gravitational acceleration that we had here. So this is going to be 200 times 9,81. That is what the question is asking you guys. So some of these questions, you just have to play around with the, the question and the information that you're given. So the coefficient of friction now is going to be 0, 0,0. 91. Okay, that will be 0, 0,091 to three decimal place like that. Okay, so this is what we're supposed to have or how we're supposed to answer this typical question. Okay, so I think uh, that's it. Uh, 15 marks for this uh, question. Everything on question seven on uh, metal cutting machines from this paper. Uh, so this is how our questions can be like. Okay, so we shall have another class uh, from Amazon African Motives till we meet again.